The Align Research Fund was created to identify and support knowledge generation and translation and learning to understand and address discriminatory gender norms that affect lives of adolescents and young adults in a range of contexts. In particular, uh, we hope to offer small amounts of funding for small and innovative research projects, uh, a type of funding we identified as often difficult to come by. Today, we will talk to three of the six grantees who will be able to talk to us about their projects firsthand are the Visionaria for Schools Network, working in Peru, Mexfan from Mexico City, and Coffee International, who conducted a meta-evaluation of the Global Education Challenge. My name is Paola Salivias Mendez. I am the co-founder and regional manager of the Visionaria Network. My name is Paul Spurzum. I'm co-founder and executive director of Visionaria Network, a nonprofit organization with the mission to activate local visions for personal and sustainable development. And currently we're working in Cusco, Peru, developing our Visionaria for Schools program with secondary schools, both teachers and students. The Align Research Fund supported our Projecting Futures study which aim to identify those prevailing gender norm expectations, as well as identifying the impacts of our project in this process of teacher training towards the shift of these um, very traditional gender norms um, expectations. Helped us look at some important research questions around norms in the classroom, like what students would do when they graduate secondary school, what's the expected behavior of boys and girls in class, and is it different? And finally, what are important life decisions that boys and girls make in their lives that teachers would expect boys and girls to make and that boys and girls might expect themselves to make it. Teachers and groups of boys and girls uh, were trained on how to use a camera and how to take photos of abstract ideas um, and go out and collect photos in line with the themed research questions that we had for the project. They came back and we were able to sit and discuss the different photos and try and understand if there are some kind of unintended ways that uh, we're looking at gender norms in the classroom. Collective reflection of not only what's represented, but like all the underlying um, ideas, thoughts, expectations from what participants took pictures of. To look at those differences and discuss them with teachers, really, uh, it, was, it was a process firstly for them to understand some of the biases and the gender norms that they still held. Um, and also for us to understand uh, a little bit more about how our program needs to go a little bit deeper if we want to see these norms changed in the classroom. Even though teachers express to have a very progressive mindset, um, very traditional expectations and um, ideas are still held for both their male students as well as their female students. So femininity, um, uh, very linked to being sensitive, very, uh, being sensible um, and needing protection is still reinforced. And holding this um, very traditional belief of masculinity associated with being very loud in class, being um, disrespectful sometimes, being aggressive as well. This research is helping us go to the provincial ministry and show a real example from teachers in their province uh, that shows that gender equality is, is an issue even if in general people agree that gender-based violence is, is a terrible thing and that girls have as much power and potential as boys. Um, there are still these kind of latent stereotypes and underlying biases that, that teachers can hold and they don't really take the topic seriously until you can show them a real example um, from teachers in the province and uh, hopefully we'll get some more support as we continue to talk about gender norms and gender equality in the public school context. Mi nombre es Angélica García Olivares, soy gerente de programas sociales de la Fundación Mexicana para la Planeación Familiar. MEXFAM es una organización líder en México en salud sexual y reproductiva, con una trayectoria de 52 años trabajando en estos temas, entre ellos el tema de violencia basada en género. Hay poca información, poca evidencia acerca de la efectividad de los programas de educación integral en sexualidad. Con el apoyo de Line Fund, Un equipo de investigación conformado por el staff de MEXFAM implementó una serie de metodologías que nos permitieran evaluar si realmente un programa de educación integral en sexualidad enfocado en generar pensamiento crítico y discusión alrededor de las normas de género era efectivo para la prevención de la violencia basada en género. Encontramos primero 
que las y los adolescentes que tomaron un currículo de 20 horas fueron capaces de identificar diferentes manifestaciones de la violencia y lo más importante lo pudieron identificar dentro de sus propias relaciones de pareja y también en las relaciones que establecen otros adolescentes entre ellos. Les permitió también llevar el tema a sus familias y solicitaban solución de dudas a partir, por ejemplo, de mensajes de WhatsApp. Eso es importante porque encontraron la manera de solucionar sus dudas y que de otra manera no habrían tenido esta oportunidad. Y lograron identificar qué mecanismos y qué pasos tienen que seguir para acceder a un servicio en caso de sufrir violencia. Antes de la intervención manifestaban rechazo hacia las personas que tenían una orientación sexual diferente a la heterosexual. Al terminar la intervención aumentó la aceptación a otras orientaciones sexuales. Los hallazgos de esta investigación fortalecen nuestro programa de educación integral en sexualidad que vamos a seguir implementando de manera constante en las zonas en las que tenemos presencia, de manera que el impacto se expande. Tenemos presencia a nivel nacional. My name is Sophie Amelie and I am a consultant working for Coffee International Development in our evaluation and research practice. Coffee were the independent uh, evaluation manager for the DFID funded Girls Education Challenge Fund, which financed projects uh, across 18 different countries uh, to improve girls' access to retention and learning in school. Well, we undertook this study to find out three key things. The first thing was which gender norms act as barriers that prevent girls from being able to enroll, attend, and learn in school. The second was how do projects try to intervene in those barriers and thirdly what can we learn about how effective those interventions or those strategies are. With Alliance support we've been able to tap into the wealth of data that we accumulated through the Girls Education Challenge Fund evaluation. We then reviewed all of the project report which we also triangulated or compared with the reports that we produced as the evaluation manager. There were two really big takeaways from our research. The first, and perhaps unsurprisingly, was that gender norms are really sticky or resistant to change. But that doesn't mean that projects didn't have success in being able to overcome or bypass some of those norms in order to improve girls' access uh, to education and their learning. The second big takeaway, and for me this was the more interesting of the two findings, was the central role that teachers play in being able to overcome discriminatory gender norms. Girls were able to, uh, to be more engaged in the classroom because of the ways in which teachers were interacting with them and because of the teacher trainings which helped to overcome some of the views that they had about girls' capacity and ability to learn. And I think there are really important learnings in there, both for for practitioners, for the implementing partners, but also of course for policy makers in terms of knowing well which interventions might be more effective if, if what we want to do is overcome some of these discriminatory gender norms, some of these sticky norms in education. Mm -hmm.